and absolutely know who they are is that I absolutely know who I am. My credentials in science of mind are that I had 30 spinal operations and spent three years in the hospital and was told I would never walk and that cost me for the rest of my life and all that stuff. And, and now I'm perfectly healthy. So know that when I talk to you this morning, as I talk to you this morning, I'm, I'm, this is not something I read from a book somewhere. You, know, you, you probably don't know anybody who ever survived 30 major surgical procedures on their spine, much less looks as good as I do. So. <laughs> She was there to do. She was there to assist me to face reality. 
And so I, I was not very nice to her. Besides, I was not having a good day. <laughs> I didn't like going into the hospital for surgery. It always made me nervous when they come in with these razors to shave me. So anyway, I was not having a good day. So I said to her, I don't care how long you've had your boss. Let me get out of my room. <laughs> They told me you were going to be tough. <laughs> I'm done. This lady, she was in there with her hospital pajamas and her hospital robe and her hospital slipper. She was there on a mission. And I knew that. But she said, they told me you were going to be tough. And I said, lady, I want you out of my room. And she says, I'm here to talk to you about accepting your cost to me. And I said, I'm here to tell you, lady, I'm not going to have mine for 15 years. And she said, who do you think you are? <laughs> and we explained some other... Or, you know, exchange some other pleasantries. If you will. <laughs> Construction has its own language, if you know what I mean. I, I, I didn't even know shovel was one word until I was almost 40. <laughs> Ask somebody to explain it to you. Anyway, uh, finally, I said, lady, I'm naked underneath these covers, and if you're not out of here in about three seconds, I'm going to throw off these covers, I'm going to jump up, and I'm going to throw... And I was very specific in parts of her anatomy. I was going to, you know, get out of my room. And so she, she stormed off and went out and told somebody, because later one of the residents of North Beach Surgery came in and said, come on, get dressed. We're going to go down and visit another doctor, which I was used to, because I was in the University of Washington Hospital teaching hospital. And so we went down and visited this psychiatrist. <laughs> started down this long corridor in the hospital and said, psychiatric ward. And I just skidded, you know, like, I'm not going. Yeah. He said, you're not going down there to visit. Just, or not, you're not going down there to live, just visit. So anyway, we went down and had a nice talk. And this guy told me I was living in a dream world. He told me that he knew about my, I talked with my doctors, there was no way, no way that the lower colon that was so chewed up by this infection was in my spine. He said, there's no way the lower colon is going to heal itself. The body has limitations. And I, I said, no, no, it, all things are possible if you believe they are. And he said, that's what you and I are, and now this is after about a year, an hour or an hour and a half of creating a safe space and me sort of sharing my guts out. And so he could then take various pieces of that feed him back to me. <laughs> but this was a loving, caring man. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes be people beat up doctors because they're so negative. Mine weren't negative. They just studied the science called allopathic medicine. And this fellow happened to be also studying a science called, you know, psychiatric medicine. And within those sciences, there are limitations. I mean, from, a, from an allopathic medical model, the human body has limitations. But see, this guy was studying disease and how to deal with it. And what he wanted me to do was agree with him about my disease and how I should deal with it. And I was over here studying wellness and how to create it. And I want to tell you something. Studying disease and how to deal with it is not the same process as studying wellness and how to create it. So we've done it here. He knew all about me. He knew all about me. He had my medical records in front of me. He had notes from the doctors that said I was abusing my pain medication. He had notes from my family that said I was abusing my pain medication. He had notes from my doctors and family saying I was abusing my sleeping pills. So when we went head to head and, and he was saying, it's time you begin to look at the world and put down your rose-colored glasses. And you're saying, there's a power in the universe and I'm going to learn how to use it. And he's saying, son, you need to face reality. He said, have you looked at your medical records? Do you, this is your 18th surgery. Have you looked at this? And I said, I'm not in my medical records. He said, son, have you looked at your past? You have been sick for this many years. It's been this kind of stuff. And, and you had all this data from my past. And I said, I'm not my past. And he got fairly, you know, it's a great story. And I may tell more of it in the workshop. But finally I got up and I said, I don't want to hear this anymore. I don't want to talk to you anymore. And he said, I know you don't want to hear this. And I said, no, listen to my words. I'm not going to hear this anymore. And when I turned to leave, he said, Terry, as I was turning, he said, Terry, who do you think you are? And I just ignored him. And I went to the door, and as I opened the door, he said, son, and I turned around, and I said, what? He said, son, you are in denial. And this was before denial was the end thing to be in. <laughs> this is back in the early 70s. Denial hasn't been really been the end thing except about the last six, eight years. So he said, son, you're in denial. And I turned back and I said, no, doctor, I'm a choice. 